everyone is super busy on building this rectangular shape shallow aquarium with sandstone stone sticking out of it. It's visible from 360 degrees. This is a very exciting project. Stay with us to see how we made it. Welcome to the beautiful world of aquascaping. We didn't even start and I already love this sensei stone. Sensei in Japanese means teacher, master and it looks great in this and there are no big stones that uh, would fit your aquarium uh, as they come and we were lucky enough to find a smaller piece to put on the top of the big one. This is going to be in the main stone, it is positioned in the golden ratio point and we're going to have other stones hanging out. I do have Gary and Huba with me to help us. Gary is going to help me with the gluing hardscape preparation and Huba is going to help me with the terrestrial plants. We are planning to have um, an aquarium that is a hybrid build design-wise. We are going to put Hygrolon on top of this one and the Hygrolon will take the water up from, from the aquarium. We are maxing it out here a little bit, so. It will grow in a little bit slower than usual, but it will be just fine. Okay, if it dries out, his fault. <laughs> yeah, it's on me. <laughs> the high roll on, people will ask us where to get it. If you are looking for it online, I'm sure you can find it, but uh, it's not something you can come by easily. This one is kind of healed. Kind of. This line is perfect. I didn't mind the fact that there's a step. We're gonna fill it up with stuff and we can put some plants in it and the hygrolon will come out all the way. You will see it from here that the right side of this rock is perfectly aligned with the bottom of this rock. So it looks perfect from this side. And actually this is the important side because this is where the people come into the green aqua gallery from that side. If this tank was higher, like 45 centimeters, it would just you know, block the view from the, from the aquariums be behind it. Oh, working. Healed. Okay, so let's go for the second one and let's try not to ruin this whole scape. I'm just experimenting. So I don't have a plan per se. Uh-huh. This plateau here is the same thing, see? So this is working like that. Okay, I'm happy with this. Should we support it before we start? Yeah, let's yeah. support it. I've never built an aquarium with this stone. It's relatively new to green aqua. And uh, you can actually buy it from us. If, uh, if you live in Europe, we ship to most European countries. The new good thing is that it stops here. So it's just wobbly. We could glue Gary's finger and then he could stay here. So Gary, what's happening with the glue? Can you whisper to it? <laughs> <laughs> the glue whisperer. Please try faster. Big claps for Gary. <laughs> the other way around, this is the top. So every rock has a face. You will start like moving it around and you will see how it looks. Yeah, this, this, this will look great. So let me talk a little bit more about the filtration because it's the single most important thing in an aquarium. We have the uh, Eheim 2080, the Professional 3, 1200 XL Eheim filter beneath this tank. It's quiet, it has 12 liters of biological filter media, which is a lot. Uh, it has two inflows, which is important. If you have a good filter, you're gonna cope with the organic decomposition, which, which happens under the water. The problem is that fish poop, plants melt, and when that happens, uh, bacteria actually will transform that decomposing organic stuff into ammonia, which is a substance that is toxic to fish and it triggers algae bloom. So if you want to get rid of that, it's very important to have a very good filtration. The, see, I'm checking from all sides, so these aquariums need to be checked from all sides. Just a little bit, yeah like that. It is serious stones. It's not a problem to combine these stones when they're not visible. 
It's just for support and the glue will cover it and the plants will cover it. Don't let it go. No. <laughs> it's fine, okay. So I like the angle. Our team member Lori, who is best in fish at Green Aqua, is, came up with the suggestion to use the Uroptamoides, the Boraras Uroptamoides here. We used that fish before and we love the way that they swim around these rocks. Also stick around because you're going to see a lot of these guys swimming around at the end of this video. I love the fact that when you're standing here, this big one is actually in between the 240 and the 650 liter tank. Oh, you're good. What did you do? Did you smash them? I asked Lori. Oh, <laughs> smart man. Can you hold it with one hand only, please? Which hand? Uh, right hand, yeah. looking up, looking right, and looking straight. Mm. But as soon as you move here, it starts to be better and better and better and better. We're going to use that, but for something else. No, let's take this out. Gary's already coming with the ideas. That's, that's the top one. Oh! Gary, today. <laughs> Gary, you're dangerous today. We will have five rocks in total, odd number. So the plan is to have two more. I think it's important to mention that although you can define gravity with impa glue, in most cases it's always better to shoot for at least some balance, like here. We will lift this, we will glue it, and then we will put it back in place. So Gary, the idea would be to uh, not see any glue on the sides or as little glue as possible. And see if it holds. Should go like this. Yeah, that could work, but we need to raise it. Oh, by the way, guys, this is the exact stone that we photographed for our website. If you go up and check out the Sensei stone, this is what you see. How cool is that? I have some ADA Aquasoil Amazonia version 2. I have the root taps for that. That's gonna go in the middle. We actually agreed in advance that we will do a similar style than in the Yeah, which, which we change now a little bit. We can use this edge here to plant something, even this one, because it's also almost at the water level. What should we do with the hygrolon? That's where the water level starts. I don't mind bringing the whole thing up on this side and then starts to wrap around. That can be actually done. We marked all the rocks that we want to have some terrestrial plants on with terra tape. Huba is going to start working on, on putting some hygrolon in certain places and preparing the plants to be put in there. Yep. Okay, That's and correct. in the meantime, we're going to add the um, ADA Aqua Soil Amazonia inside the tank with Gary. We're not going to use any base layer fertilizing substrate this time because we're going to utilize some plants that do not really need uh, base layer fertilizing substrate in this layout. What's important when you're using Hygrolon that it has a direction. So you just need to look at the grains and uh, you need to cut them accordingly. I 
I want it to, to keep the, the whole thing thin. I don't want a bulky structure there. I want a very thin structure. It's too high. Top five centimeters should have no plants. Time for some more rocks. So we should find like the mid-sized rocks that would look great and to add some detail. ADA Colorado sand. We have some bags open. I'm going to use it in the front and I'm going to let it run onto the Amazonia. The point is that here in the front, it should be thin. So not more than one or two millimeters. We don't know how to apply the hygrolon to the rocks so that it stays there. Huba said that you cannot glue the hygrolon. You cannot glue it because it will always just move the glue. It is. The whole thing is soaking in glue. It's just not holding the rock. No glue. Yeah, I got <laughs> You have no glue. glue. Two points of imper super glue. And it's below water. We are ready with the uh, hardscape, the soil, and I'm getting tired because we've been shooting for at least six hours now. Oh my God. But we're in the finish line, so the planting will commence now. We will use the um, Tripartita Mini that Otti has used actually in that tank that you see probably in the full shot behind me. And I do want to have some Monte Carlo if the Tripartita Mini is not enough. Other than that, I had no idea. As we move on, we will see what other plants I want to use. Time to plant. I'm going to start with the Tripartita Mini. Just divide it into bunches like that. Hold it with my tweezers, push it inside. I will use it in the middle everywhere and then just move along the right side or the left side of the tank. I started to plant to the Ricardia and I will start to use it in these places where the glue is visible. The Bucephalandras have arrived. Good news about Bucephalandras is that they can be actually planted, so I can use them in the soil. You want me to go all the way to the bottom with the moss? What moss is this? Christmas? Christmas. Yes. I would love to use Cryptoparva everywhere, but the problem with it is that it's just, the leaves are so thin that it disappears really quickly from the layout. It's good for like an accent. And I'm using the Bucephalandras planted because I need like a transition, the mid ground between the rocks and the soil and the foreground plants. I know we said it earlier, that you cannot really glue anything on hygrolon, but as long as it's below the water and still you have some unglued hygrolon pieces below the water as well, it will just be fine. And also I'm just threading some ADA wood tight behind the hygrolon, so that way I can just a little bit pinch it with the wire and that way it just sticks on vertical surfaces a little bit easier. We used 15 pots of Christmas moss. Crazy. Seven and a half hours of shooting and we are done with the shallow tank. All that remains to be done is to, this one was as well, all that remains to be done is to fill it up with water, get the Eheim filter to work, 
and uh, wait three weeks until we introduce the beautiful Urapta Moides fish. So don't go anywhere because you guys are going to see how this thing looks in a couple of weeks. Thanks for watching us. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye. Goodbye, everyone.